Hello! Today we're going to make really simple ceramic tiles for beginners. It's a really easy setup with just a few items that you should mostly have lying about your house. We're going to start off with getting a pattern. Now, if you want to draw your own pattern on your tiles, or if you want to paint your own pattern on your tiles, that's absolutely fine. They're your tiles. You could do whatever you want with them. But for our beginner class, what we've done is we've cut out some really simple tile patterns that I got off the internet. There's a plethora of internet tiles that you can download. I just created the file in Adobe Photoshop just because that's something that I'm familiar with, but there are several other programs that you could use uh, and you could print the tiles out. So I created a four square tile pattern. It's eight inches by eight inches. And then I cut the individual squares out so that they are four inches by four inches. Now, once we put them in the kiln, they will shrink a little bit. So they're not gonna be perfect four inch tiles. But like I said, this is a beginner class, so we're not gonna be too picky. So what you wanna do for your first step is cut out an eight by eight inch square. So that's what this is. It doesn't have to have a pattern on it. It could just be a blank piece of paper. And then you're also gonna need your pattern for the size that you want to actually create your tile. So if you wanna make four tiles, cut out four four inch tiles. The next thing we'll definitely need is three pounds of clay to make four tiles and we will get started. First thing I always do when I start a project like this, and we're gonna hand slab roll, or um, use our rolling pin to roll out a slab, is I like to pack my clay. I know that I've already wedged it. If you don't know how to wedge clay, I will be making a video on how to do that, so stay tuned for that. But now I know that it's wedged, it's got all the air pockets out of it, but it has been sitting in a bag for a while, so I just like slapping it and compacting the clay. So I'll go around all the way and do that really quick. So the next step what we're going to do is I'm going to just slam it down on my table. I'm going to do that on both sides and just keep rotating it on both sides to create a flat disc. Creating a flat disc is just gonna make it easier for us to roll it out. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to put our cloth onto our board. Make sure when you do this part that your cloth is on the board that you're gonna actually store the tiles on. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna roll it out. And I start from the middle and work to the edges. And I just do that in all directions. Now this is where your dowels will come in if you happen to get them. You don't have to use dowels, you can actually just use a pencil because essentially what we're doing is we're gonna check the thickness of our clay. We want the thickness of our clay to be one fourth of an inch, which is about the thickness of a pencil, but they also sell these dowels at a hardware store for about a dollar. Um, it came in a big long stick and I just cut them in half and then sanded the edges to make sure that they weren't rough. And I'm gonna put these two dowels just on my table as guides for the side. So as I roll it out, 
I could measure the thickness. My cat's talking. Another thing we want to do is we're going to use that square template that we cut out eight inches by eight inches. And we're going to also use this as a guide to see how big our clay is getting. So we'll keep that handy. We want the thickness to be as uniform as we possibly can by just using a rolling pin. It's not going to be perfect, but we could try to get it as close as we can. We want to make sure that as we roll out the clay, that it's got a lot of room around the edges for our pattern. We don't want it to be really tight. So we really want to make sure the clay is all the way around this pattern. So we have plenty of room to cut it out. Because as you get to the edges, it does start to get thinner. The center part is going to be the most equal thickness. Now I can see I'm starting to get kind of long this way, but it's not quite wide enough this way, so now I know I need to work more this way. And as your clay starts to get thinner, you can move the dowel closer and actually use your rolling pin right on the edge of that dowel and put pressure alongside it. And you're gonna repeat it on this side. Now, my clay's getting bigger, but as I put my pattern down, I could tell this edge is a lot thinner than it is in the middle. So I want to keep rolling it out. It's almost there. Now this edge is a little thin. The rest of my edges are looking pretty good. That's pretty good. Now my clay is getting a little bit of texture on it from my rolling pin. So if you have a smoothing tool, you could use your smoothing tool and just smooth any rough patches that you have. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our square and put it on the most even surface area and just smooth it down with your hands. You're gonna use your ruler and use your ruler as your straight edge so that you get a nice defined cut and it doesn't cut into your paper. You're gonna use your knife tool, start from the edge of the clay, and cut all the way across. And we're gonna do that to all four sides. So now you could take the excess clay off of your pattern. And then compress that clay into a ball and put that in your plastic bag so that you could save this for another project. But you're gonna definitely want to wedge this clay 
before you use it because now it's full of all kind of air pockets. The next step what we're going to do is take the paper off of the clay and we're done with that for now. Using your ruler, measure just to be safe. So it looks like mine came out to be just a tiny bit under eight inches. So I'm going to line my ruler up so that I could get exactly in the middle of this. And I'm going to measure four in the middle with my knife tool and I'm just going to very, very gently leave an, ind in, um, an indent in the clay at four inches. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I did it at the top and now I'm doing it at the bottom. I'm going to kind of measure it so it looks like about eight inches on this side. I'm lining it up to where the four is right in the middle of this clay and I'm going to make another little indention. Indention? Is that a word? I'm going to make an indent. I'm going to make a mark. Now I'm going to line my ruler up against those two marks that I made in the clay and I'm going to cut all the way down the middle. So from making that cut, the seam of the cut got a little swollen, like it, it kind of pushed its way out. This clay is really moist. So I'm just going to use my thumb and very, very gently kind of press it in. You could also use your rib tool if you need to uh, make a little correction. You could always smooth it this way. I'm going to measure on the right side. I'm measuring the whole box or the whole square so it looks like it's just a little over eight inches just a tiny bit so I'm I'm centering my ruler to make the four inch cut right in the center and I'm just putting a little mark and I'm gonna do that to the left side line up my ruler and make my mark at the four inch and then I'm going to place my ruler and line up those two marks and cut all the way through. And then using my finger, smoothing it out a little bit. So now you should have four tiles cut out. Now I have my four patterns. Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start on the right bottom corner. And the reason I'm doing this is that way the pressure from my hand isn't on another tile. So I'm going to line up my pattern so it's center on this tile. And what we're going to do is use our dull pencil, which means I sharpened it and then I kind of scribbled on a piece of paper so that it's not really sharp. We don't want a fine sharp tip because we're going to outline all of the markings onto the clay and if it was too sharp, it would cut right through the paper and then make a hole in the clay and we don't want that. So. A dull pencil is perfect. So I start, I always start at the corner and then kind of work my way around the pattern. And I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure, but not too much pressure on this pencil and outline the whole design. So just be careful not to press too hard because you don't want to push all the way through the paper. Now 
Now, once you're done tracing your design, you're gonna slowly peel it off the clay. And if your clay is really wet, like, like mine, your paper sometimes stick to it. And that's okay if you get a little bit of um, paper stuck to it, just let it dry. Uh, don't try to pick it off because if your clay is too wet, then you'll end up messing up your design. So it's okay if you get a little bit of paper on there, but when it's leather hard and you go to glaze your paper, make sure you use a wet sponge and clean that paper off. Uh, you don't want to press too hard on it with your sponge or it'll just erase the design. But very lightly, just get that paper off of there because uh, if the paper stuck too much uh, and you glaze it, it would create a barrier between your glaze and it may not stick. And we don't want that. So now that I did the bottom right corner, I'm going to rotate this so I could do my next design. So, I've got to find my edge. Got too much stuff on my table. So again, I'm going to pick my next design. I'm going to put it on the bottom right corner just because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, I don't I guess you would start on the left corner. I don't I don't know how that works because I'm not left-handed, but if you're left-handed, try starting on the left-hand corner and that might be easier for you so that you're not putting pressure on the other tiles. Okay, so now I'm done with my design. I'm gonna peel it off. There is a possibility if it dries too quickly, it could warp. So the way we could prevent that from happening is you could put a little bit of a heavier board on top of it and dry it. Which way is my board going? dry it with this board on top of it just so that it helps keep it uh, even consistency but there we go I'm all done and we will let these dry for a couple days before we glaze them um, my class was on Saturday and then next Saturday we will be doing the glazing I'm gonna choose well, with the tiles that I did before, I chose five, I think five different colors. Uh, these designs are a little bit simpler, so I might just choose maybe three colors. Um, I'll just kind of take a look at the pattern. Keep the patterns so that when you do go to glaze, you know, your lines aren't going to be perfect, and sometimes they're a little bit too light to see so having a visual reference of what you're painting is going to be really important to have so i usually will just keep it right next to the tile as i'm glazing it so i just have a visual reference one of the reasons why we like putting it on this cloth if you had tried to lift these up it would curl and bend and then it would be really difficult to get it back in the same shape and then it wouldn't be uniform and it wouldn't be even so with this cloth, when it is time to remove it, you can lift the whole thing up and then gently remove, right now they're too wet, but you could gently remove the cloth from the back, still maintaining your shape. Because if it was directly on the board, it has, it's like a suction cup. It'll just stick right to that board. You can even use um, the cloth to put on top of the board so that when you're storing it, it doesn't stick that way too. 
So there we go. That's how you make tiles. Thank you for watching my video, How to Make Ceramic Tiles Part 1. Please check out Part 2 to see how I glaze the tiles. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy watching these videos. Also, check out my website, hardshellslimysnail.com to see more information on products that I have for sale and other projects that I'm working on.